don't see plenty of seats wide open in the back. You don't have to crowd each other. Less that's what you want to do. Good evening, and welcome to the Southwest Airlines Trip Report and Flight Experience on Flight 2229. For this report, I'm flying from Las Vegas to Long Beach. If you happen to take public transportation to the airport, expect a long walk to the check-in area at Terminal 1. Follow the signs, then take the escalator or elevator down to the ticketing area. Southwest here is down at the very end. From here, you then go to these kiosks. They also have check-in desks to the left of the kiosk. And then from here, you can get your paper boarding pass, check your luggage and tag them, or check to see if you want to change flights. This is the last flight of the day, so it doesn't really matter. Once you've got all of your docks and bags checked, you drop it off at the bag drop, head to TSA, and then head to your gate. There's our flight, 2229 to Long Beach, departing at 6.55 p.m. at C12. And so far, it's on time. I have TSA pre-check, so that makes things a little quicker. Being a Wednesday night, it's not too busy, and I completed TSA screening in about five minutes. Right now, planes are using runway 7 Romeo to land and 7 Lima to take off. But by the time we depart, we'll be using 25 Romeo, 25 R, and head towards the west. Tonight, we're departing from gate C12. From TSA, you'll turn left, then turn left again to take the train, or turn right to walk. C12 is at the very end of the terminal, so you should expect to walk a bit. I did it walking briskly in about 5 minutes. You should budget at least 10 minutes if your flight is departing from the end of the C gates. Here we are after a 5 minute brisk walk. Tonight I'll be flying on this 11 year old Boeing 737-800. It's registered November 8606 Charlie. It was delivered to Southwest Airlines on January 1st, 2013. The exit rolls. the FAA, you're allowed one carry-on item, one personal item. Carry-on item is to be stowed in the overhead bin. Personal item goes underneath the seat in front of you. If you do come to the podium with more than two items, I'll ask you to step aside and we can consolidate down to two. Or we can check that third item to your final destination. Items to your final destination. Please be sure to remove any lithium batteries, e-cigarettes, laptops, and personal belongings such as medications. Per federal regulation, alcohol is not permitted past these doors. If you are using a mobile device today as your boarding pass, please make sure to have that brightness raised all the way up so we can get you scanned in properly. This is flight 2229 with service to Long Beach. We're going to start with our pre-board passengers. Pre-board passengers first. I always hate leaving Vegas. Even though I live in Long Beach now, Vegas seems more like my home. I feel like I have a better support base for my new business venture, and Vegas seems to fit more my personality than Long Beach. We'll see if I end up moving here or I become a digital nomad. For tonight's flight, I'll be in the B boarding group, B13. We board after the A group and after any A-list status passengers who didn't get an A boarding group active military and families traveling with children. For our flights, there are 50 open seats, so the plane should be about a third full when I board. These flights between Vegas and Long Beach are usually about 45 minutes, so it's a quick and easy flight on Southwest. on board Southwest Airlines 2229 with service to Long Beach. You can see how narrow the aisle is, and of course the front is already mostly full. Tonight, I'll be seated in 21F, a window seat. This seat has between 32 and 33 inches of pitch. Seat width is 17 inches. You can see, there is no IFE, however, you can use your mobile device to stream some live TV, some movies and other entertainment. There is your meal tray 
and it pulls out, but it looks like it's broken. Something came loose. So I'm not going to be using that, which is okay, since it's just a snack service. I guess that's where something came loose. And my backpack fits underneath the seat. There's no power outlet or USB port, so make sure your device is fully charged. For a short flight, it's not a problem. These seats look a little bit different than what you normally see on the 737-800s or Max. These seats are what you would find on the 737-700, with no adjustable headrest. You'll want to roll up your jacket or something for lumbar support. But overall, the seat is fairly well padded compared to the newer planes. And that's what the seat looks like from the side, very similar to the 700, reclines a couple of inches or so. So these planes do not have the newer seats, therefore there is no headrest. It's okay, short flight, no worries. Open seating here at Southwest, so wherever you like. Once you have selected your seat, we do ask that you step out of the aisle, so just allow us. And finally, from the seat, I'll have a window to look out at for the next 45 minutes or so. I intentionally sat on this side because from here you'll be able to see the strip from runway 25 when you take off. We all have seats in the back together, guys. Thank you. Strong possibility we will be declining from the back as well as the front of the aircraft. Can't guarantee that. It's a good thing she didn't guarantee that because in the end, we didn't get to deplane from the back at Long Beach. I guess I didn't notice how much service Delta has from here. Sure it's not Atlanta, but there is a lot of service on Delta from Vegas. FAA regulations require customer compliance the following line of posture, reach and signs, post up placards, and crew's instructions regarding seatbelt and smoking, change in cabin pressure, which should one occur. For all to mass, we'll drop the compartment overhead. Immediately put on the yellow mask, fully extend the plastic two as this activates the flow of oxygen. Place the mask in your nose and mouth and breathe normally. The mask must with elastic strap. For the child with children, please secure yourself first, then assist the child. Continue in the mass otherwise notified by uniform crew members. But these are do's and don'ts. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight into Long Beach. Set tonight, we're going to have a very beautiful takeoff out of Las Vegas. So enjoy our sights and sounds of the takeoff. We're going to be able to see the strip from this side of the plane.
normal, there's a little bit of turbulence taking off out of Las Vegas. However, there won't be enough to stop the flight attendants from serving snacks and beverages. So we're going to have some of that tonight. So you just saw a sample of what's on southwestwifi.com. Internet is $8, which I think for a short flight is not really worth it. It is available to Business Select and A-List Preferred for free. You also saw a sample of the movies, TV shows, and live TV options. For a flight like this, I'll usually be watching ESPN. It's sometimes hit and miss whether we get snacks and beverages on these short flights. There wasn't a lot of turbulence, and with about 125 passengers, flight attendants came by taking our drink orders and passed out the snacks. This evening, we get the regular snack mix, and I chose to get a cup of water. This is probably one of the smoother flights I've taken. There isn't any turbulence, and there's a beautiful sunset off in the distance. I'm going to be watching some of the live streaming TV for a bit. Know that just as quickly as we get up to cruising altitude and get our snacks and beverages, we'll start descending, and the flight attendants will come and collect any and all remaining trash. I've even seen them still passing out beverages as we're descending, and then right after they pass out the beverages, immediately announce they're getting the trash. I've even had an instance where I placed an order for a drink, some water, and I never got that. Let's wrap up tonight's flight on Southwest Airlines 2229 from Las Vegas to Long Beach. First, if you take public transportation to Harry Reid International Airport, it will drop you off downstairs next to the baggage claim at Terminal 1. You'll have a long walk to the check-in area, and if you're departing from Terminal 3, you'll need to take another shuttle. So give yourself plenty of time. There's nothing fancy flying southwest. This flight is like clockwork for me. There are plenty of kiosks and even check-in counters, so it's pretty easy if you need to check bags, change your flight, or print boarding passes if you still like using paper boarding passes. If you can, fly midweek, as it's a good time to fly in and out of Vegas, as it's not as busy or expensive as Friday or Sunday night. You'll certainly have a much more relaxed experience. Boarding was uneventful and the announcements are pretty clear when and where to board. We departed a few minutes late out of Las Vegas, but usually it's not a problem unless you have a tight connection in Long Beach. The seats were fine, I've never had a flight with broken equipment until this flight and the broken tray table. It wasn't a big deal since I was able to use the tray next to my seat. The flight attendants were professional and nothing bad to say about them. They served the beverages as quick as they could and they seemed to work well as a team. There really isn't much else to say, as if you've followed me for a while, you know I'm not going to make dramatic statements or scenes or make up stuff. I paid for this flight with a combination of credits and cash. The opinions I have are entirely my own and I get no compensation from Southwest Airlines. With all that to say, enjoy our landing in Long Beach. We're landing just about on time, 8pm. Request it 
passengers, please remain seated. Here's our Virgin Classic arrival. Thanks for joining me on Southwest Airlines 2229 from Las Vegas to Long Beach. Please remember to leave a like and a comment below and subscribe to see more. See you next time. Thanks.